Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I am Sumana from Citizen Consumer and Civic Action Group, CAG. And uh, today we are uh, also very happy to, uh, you know, uh, say that we have uh, senior officials from the police department with us. Uh, the additional commissioner of traffic, Mr. Pradeep Kumar, has kindly joined us, even though he has, as always, a lot of meetings and is, has a very busy schedule. We also have the DC traffic planning, Mr. Surendranath, who has also taken time out to join us today. And we are, I'm sure everybody is looking forward to hearing uh, from them as well. And they will be sharing uh, from their experience and their knowledge of many years on uh, various issues. So, but before we get to all of that, um, we, and of course we have our third speaker from IIT Chennai, Dr. Geeta Krishna and Ramadurai, who is also very knowledgeable on uh, road safety and transportation. Uh, so welcome everyone to all our speakers and to all our participants. Thank you for taking time out today and joining us. And uh, we hope that this will be a very useful and interesting uh, webinar for everyone. Uh, so I'm just going to take a second to share my screen. And Right. So um, the context for today's uh, webinar is, uh, well, from the, as from the title, one can see it's about speeding. But before that, it's also because this week, uh, since, the la since last Saturday, we've had several uh, important days in the calendar, and we thought it was a good occasion to commemorate all of them. Uh, November 14th was, of course, Children's Day in India. And, uh, you know, there is a growing number of uh, you know, fatalities and injuries of uh, children, young people in our country due to ro uh, road accidents and road crashes. And then uh, 20th, uh, two days from now is International Children's Day. So keeping with that same uh, thing of young people dying on our roads. And on 21st, uh, the, the upcoming Sunday is a World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims. So commemorating all the lives that we have lost, unfortunately, to road crashes uh, across the world. And so I think uh, this is a great opportunity to also um, remember all of the people who have lost their lives and to also take a minute to think about them and to also pledge that we all work, continue to work rather, towards reducing these uh, you know, terrible, unnecessary loss of lives. So with that, uh, let me jump straight in. Um, so uh, let me briefly talk a bit about uh, CAG. Uh, we are a 35 plus year old organization. We're based out of Chennai, a nonprofit organization. And uh, we work on a number of different is issues. Uh, we work on consumer rights uh, with the government and with other CSOs across the state uh, and across the country. Um, we help uh, people uh, figure out what are the, you know, they come, they come to us with a grievance, we try and help them uh, figure out what uh, legally, what are their options and how to take that forward and resolve those issues as a consumer. We also work on urban governance issues. We've worked for uh, several years with the Greater Chennai Corporation on uh, solid waste management. Uh, we continue to interact with them and work with them and CSOs and citizens on this. Uh, we also work on electricity governance. Uh, we very closely with uh, the Tamil Nadu uh, Tangentco, which is the distributor, distribution utility for electricity in the state. Uh, we're on their grievance redressal forum. Uh, so again, a lot of work on that and on renewable energy. Uh, we also work on uh, share, disseminating information on environment impact assessment uh, to communities so that they understand what happens when uh, things like uh, thermal power plants or any sort of development comes near their area. So they understand and interact with the government and the process on these things. And of course, not last but not the least, we work on road safety and sustainable transport to promote uh, public transit, walking, cycling, uh, and of course, to focus on reducing uh, road fatalities. So in terms of road safety, uh, we have been part of the uh, 
uh, a national coalition of groups, various uh, network, the road safety network, uh, some of whom members have joined us today uh, to look at uh, how we can work with the government to strengthen the uh, legislation around road safety and also to support uh, government agencies at the state and national level on better implementation and enforcement. And of course, as always, to create awareness on road rules and road safety and have that public discourse and focus on road safety in the public domain uh, and keep that focus on this very, very important topic because every day should be a road safety day. So as part of the road safety network, as I said, at the national level, we work with the government at the center. We give inputs on uh, you know, any draft rules that have come out. Uh, we send in some recommendation and ideas from our side as a collective group. We collaborate with uh, different agencies on awareness program, and we use uh, social media to keep road safety in the focus uh, you know, with citizens so that uh, you know, there's little nuggets of information going out and we uh, keep uh, road safety at the top of the mind for everybody. So at the state level, in the last uh, six plus years that we've been focusing on road safety, uh, we've done a number of different things. We've had district level uh, programs, workshops across every district in the state, uh, back when it was 32 states, I mean 32 districts, sorry. And uh, this was focused on understanding the amendments to the Motor Vehicle Act and getting stakeholder perspectives. Uh, we had the honor of having um, the uh, transport, the then transport minister join us, as well as the uh, minister for Tamil culture as well, who join, joined us uh, for uh, one of some of the district programs. Um, we've had collectors, uh, representatives from transport and police departments join us as well for these programs. And we've continued to also give uh, inputs and comments, shared our studies and uh, data with the state government. We've also done a number of programs on surveys and where we've uh, done uh, compliance surveys and shared that again with the state government on helmet and seatbelt compliance, on pedestrian safety. Uh, we've uh, put together a lot of information on those things and shared it with the government. We work with colleges where several colleges also uh, passed rules within their college at the end of the uh, for program that we did with them and the study that we did with them to insist that their students and staff, uh, you know, wear helmet and seat belt and sort of, so that we get uh, greater compliance and uh, uh, among citizens uh, for this. And we've done uh, numerous programs with the police and the transport departments uh, over the last years on Road Safety Week, on World Day of Remembrance, and uh, you know, even otherwise, uh, where we've had general programs with the public uh, on road safety awareness. And we've also had a number of workshops and training programs with companies, uh, with the Air Force uh, Station at Arakonam, a number of different groups. Uh, we've also sent letters both to the government and uh, to various bodies on ensuring that they comply with various road safety norms. Uh, for example, with the government, we had uh, also pointed out to the police uh, the need for the government uh, personnel themselves, the police personnel, uh, to follow the rules because they set an example for citizens and that was well taken uh, by the uh, city commissioner, the previous commissioner who had issued a circular on this very fact. We've also had a couple of rallies and competitions and various programs with college students across the state at different times. Uh, we've had uh, media workshops uh, to talk about road safety, sharing information with the media, uh, data from our studies and government reports so that road safety continues to be highlighted uh, in the media. Uh, we've had, we produce a number of material. We have a small booklet that we've come out with a bilingual booklet on road safety. Uh, which is available on our website. We also have some hard copies and we've shared it again with the government and with citizens. Uh, we have an interactive map on our website, uh, putting together uh, road safety data at the district level uh, so that anybody who's interested can look at it. And of course, continuous social media posts on a variety of road safety topics. Uh, we also developed some games, which were a big hit in the car-free Sunday space where children would come and learn the road rules through the game. So these are some of the various things that we've done over the last uh, five, six years. So I thought I'd just give a snapshot of our work 
and uh, then uh, to uh, jump into our uh, speed related work that we recently did i will be handing over to my colleague varsha to take that forward and share the results of the study and what the study was about varsha yeah uh, good morning everyone uh, so now i'll be taking you through the results of the speed survey uh, just a bit of context um, uh, we all know that speeding um, is inappropriate and uh, it is one of the most dangerous traffic violations uh, as it is more likely to result in crashes uh, which can inflict serious injuries or can even be fatal. Uh, so uh, we need uh, evidence-based studies to highlight uh, the speed variations uh, between different types of um, vehicles and road users. Uh, so as a first step to gauge speeding concerns, um, this spot speed survey was conducted across uh, 15 locations in the city of Chennai uh, in October. Uh, the study uh, was basically covering uh, two wheelers, cars, uh, LCVs and uh, autos. Um, the main purpose of this study was to identify the speed differential across these uh, vehicle categories. Um, the methodology followed a one hour study at each location uh, with about 40 samples uh, under each vehicle category um, and weekday traffic was considered for the same. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so some considerations that we uh, undertook for um, fixing on the locations include um, arterial stretches, uh, which uh, act as major links to job centers uh, and other um, areas of the city. Uh, second uh, was the land use. Uh, we tried to uh, fix on uh, stretches that uh, form a part of school zones. Um, and then uh, we also conducted a, a basic audit wherein we studied the physical road conditions, uh, the road geometry, um, traffic patterns and other pedestrian infrastructure provisions which is existing um, so that we could um, correlate uh, these factors with the um, uh, speeding results. Uh, again, uh, care was taken to ensure that uh, we fixed on locations which were geographically spread uh, to cover the whole of the urban area of Chennai. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so in terms of the results, uh, we can see the table showing uh, the comparison between the posted speed limit uh, and the operating speed uh, for which the uh, 85th percentile was considered. Uh, we also have the um, average speed summed up um, in this, we can see that uh, almost 90% of the locations uh, show uh, consistent speeding by two wheelers. 85% uh, of the two wheelers are traveling um, at a speed uh, of 49 kilometer per hour. Um, and uh, despite the existing land use being uh, predominantly institutional in most of the areas, uh, we can observe speeding. Um, and the one particular thing that is highlighted uh, is of the Harrington Road, wherein we can see uh, a reduced violation of speeding. Um, this is mainly attributed to the uh, physical conditions and the improved uh, pedestrian infrastructure in that particular stretch. Um, next slide, please. Uh, similarly, these are the results uh, for um, the cars. Uh, we can see that um, most of the values uh, range between 65 km per hour and 74 km per hour in most of the um, stretches. Uh, except for uh, Harrington Road and Peters Road, uh, wherein uh, we can see a reduced um, a speeding concern. Uh, again, uh, we'll be um, seeing that uh, how these uh, are impacting it in the later slides. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, just to give an idea of how the results have come out, uh, we'll be um, moving to uh, the next category, which is autos uh, and share autos. Um, again, um, we can see that here lesser uh, speeding concerns uh, have been uh, observed only in a very few areas since the posted speed limit is only 25 km per hour. Uh, but due to lack of um, signages or warnings, uh, we can see that people continue to follow a nominal speed uh, and there is not much difference uh, between the uh, free speed ranges uh, of these uh, vehicle categories, which is again a concern for speeding. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, also, these are the results for uh, LCVs. Um, again, uh, we can see that uh, the LCVs uh, fall within a speed range of uh, 34 km per hour to 50 km per hour uh, when we uh, look at the free speeds. Um, 
And uh, this again puts the road users at increased risk of a, a crash. Uh, and it also depends on other um, external factors such as uh, load of the vehicle, et cetera. Uh, so uh, some of the uh, key observations from all these results, um, to sum them up, uh, next slide, please. Um, uh, we can uh, see in most cases that the operating speed of two wheelers uh, fall within a high range, uh, which is 40 to 72 kilometer per hour, and maximum number of cars travel, uh, again, in a higher range of uh, 38 to 74 kilometer per hour. Um, even though stretches uh, have uh, school zones, um, uh, designated school zones and speed limits have been um, uh, notified by the state government, uh, we can uh, still uh, see speeding as a concern there. Um, in um, one of the examples as already mentioned, uh, Harrington Road is a positive example for uh, how an optimized carriage with uh, and uh, pedestrian uh, infrastructure, uh, appropriate placement of signages can help uh, in um, reducing speed uh, concerns. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and also another interesting observation uh, was that uh, irrespective of the gender and the vehicle's engine size, uh, speeding is observed nevertheless. Um, and also uh, as per observations in the Adyar area um, near to uh, Durgabai Deshmukh Road and uh, Mumbai Road, we can see that inappropriate speeding was even observed in blind curves. Um, also, um, uh, we have to uh, revisit the uh, speed limits for autos uh, since they have an average operating speed of 43 km per hour um, and LCVs have an operating speed of 52 km per hour. Uh, next, please. Uh, so to conclude, um, some key takeaways and focus areas that we can narrow down on uh, will be we need a uh, uh, improved road design and infrastructure. Uh, clearly, we can see um, how that is impacting uh, speeding violations. Uh, as you can see, the example of uh, Harrington Road, which is a positive one, and uh, the normal scenario, uh, which is in most cases, which is shown uh, on a green waste road, wherein the pedestrian infrastructure is not really attended to. Um, uh, next slide, please. The second would be a uh, need for improved signages and speed warnings. Uh, out of all the 15 locations, we found out that only in uh, two locations uh, we could see uh, speed warnings and signages. Uh, so we need uh, improvement uh, in this area. Uh, and also, um, since our roads uh, are always shared carriageways uh, with mixed use traffic, um, that should also be considered as one of the parameters uh, before we decide on speed limits. Um, next slide, please. Uh -huh. And also uh, another positive example from the study is that uh, intelligent speed systems have been supporting um, enforcement uh, in areas like ECR Akarai, wherein you have uh, dynamic speed signals um, and uh, display boards uh, wherein you can even keep a check on your own speed. Uh, and because of these effective monitoring aspects, um, the stretch does not uh, really um, experience violations. Um, when compared to the other locations. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so now, uh, since we have looked at all these concerns and the positive examples, uh, the way forward would be for us to um, first review and revise the existing speed limits. Um, we already know that um, uh, th there have been uh, several global um, uh, advocacies regarding uh, setting up a target speed of 30 km per hour. Uh, which is considered as a, a safe target speed. Um, and uh, that's been going on. So keeping all those in mind, uh, we should um, uh, revi uh, review our speed limits. Uh, and also um, in case of India, uh, since increasing speed limits has been on, um, on, uh, on trend nowadays uh, because of increasing speed limits in highways uh, and expressways, um, though Tamil Nadu as a state hasn't adopted um, those increased uh, speed limits, which is in fact a, a good uh, thing. Uh, we should uh, just reconsider it if, if we are really right, going forward in the right direction um, so that we create an inclusive and uh, um, safe road space for all types of users, especially given the fact that our uh, highways and express, uh, our highways cut through rural areas um, also. Um, secondly, um, we have uh, amendments and legislation in place 
uh, the MVA 2019 has been passed and we have uh, all these um, uh, laws in place. Uh, so we need stronger enforcement at the state level. Uh, though effective uh, enforcements have been carried out in Tamil Nadu, uh, we should still push for stronger enforcement in terms of penalties, uh, which is in fact a low hanging fruit when compared to um, other um, uh, focus areas where we should um, consider improving the infrastructure, which would be a long term goal. Um, this would be a short term um, easy to uh, achieve target. Um, then uh, rehabilitation of roads. Uh, again, the physical uh, design and the engineering of roads is very important. Uh, and uh, we have to consider not only the vehicle categories as well as the um, road functions, but rather um, other uh, considerations such as um, the uh, types of users, uh, the mixed use traffic, how traffic segregation is being done. Uh, all these factors should also be uh, compiled together uh, to um, ensure that uh, speed limits are um, devised um, and they are acceptable to all users rather than only the motorists. Um, and then um, improved information on uh, speed limits through signages is necessary. Uh, also, uh, as we saw the positive example of ECR Akarai, we should um, push for more such uh, effective monitoring mechanisms throughout the urban limits. Um, and um, this can also be uh, done through um, effective public sensitization. For this, we should uh, come together um, uh, through collaborative efforts of CSOs, community groups, youth groups, and also the government uh, so that we can achieve um, uh, all these uh, together. Um, so uh, uh, at last, uh, to wind up, I, I would like to um, share my thank you uh, to uh, the Chennai Traffic Police uh, for their immense support and guidance uh, throughout the study. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Professor um, Geeta Krishnan for his guidance uh, through the uh, methodology and for also the speed gun logistics. Um, and a special thanks to um, uh, Deputy Commissioner of Police, uh, traffic planning, Mr. Uh, Surendranath, uh, for um, being so receptive and uh, um, helping us throughout this process of study. Um, and uh, last but not the least, I also thank um, um, all our other uh, participants today who have made it to, uh, to the webinar. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Varsha. Uh, and uh, let me also reiterate our thanks to the police department, both the additional commissioner traffic and uh, DC traffic planning. And of course, uh, Dr. Geeta Krishnan is, uh, from IIT for all their support and help on the study. Without them, we would not have been able to uh, do this uh, at all. Um, so, but, and uh, uh, the delay, let me uh, invite uh, the additional commissioner, uh, traffic, uh, to please uh, share a few words with us. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us today and taking time off. Uh, over to you, sir, Pradeep Kumar, Pradeep Kumar, sir. Sir, you're muted. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for having me. So uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate and also express my heartfelt uh, appreciation to uh, Team CAG uh, headed by uh, Sumna Madam. Uh, you have done a very, very uh, insightful study and I was very keenly watching about your findings and methodology, everything. And I look forward to uh, take this uh, conversation <laughs> uh, and discuss about, uh, you know, uh, takeaways in depth and uh, then how do we uh, use this in our yeah. strategy and in our planning. So thanks a lot for that. And uh, let's take it forward. And after seeing the yeah. efforts of CAG, their dedication, their expertise, we have also decided to collaborate with them with another study. I think my colleagues are already talking to Sumna Man. So uh, we look for, uh, forward to that as well. That would be uh, related to drunk driving actually. So uh, that is one and I'm, Sorry, I was a little late, and uh, but I would like to share this that uh, as we speak, the Honorable CM, uh, Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, he's conducting a meeting on this topic, road safety. There are all the principles of uh, state administration are available. So I was there with the, the Commissioner of Police. Uh, and uh, you know, road safety is being given one of the uh, 
uh, priorities actually area the honorable cm has told that we need to omit we need to uh, work uh, you know in tandem with all the other agencies and i am very sure that today's meeting we will have some takeaways and uh, you know the principals will uh, uh, guide us and uh, provide us resources and uh, everything required to ensure road safety uh, in that uh, as uh, the speaker before was mentioning the collaborative efforts nothing like that we may have resources uh, we have manpower but uh, unless we collaborate with uh, like minded agencies not only government agencies organizations like cag and uh, public in general that is very very critical for any efforts to succeed in, in terms of road safety or or any other endeavor whatever may be so we look forward and uh, we would like to collaborate with cag more uh, as i said it is one of our priorities we have been successful to some extent if you look at the data about the the deaths on the road in road accidents and injuries they are coming down gradually but we are not satisfied with the results yet we need to have a very very uh, you know sustained efforts on evidence based approach that is very important and that is where the organize like uh, organizations like cag and uh, expertise from uh, iit uh, professor mam is there so we would like to hear her as well and uh, take their views into consideration when we plan for uh, whether enforcement or or other aspects of road safety so this platform uh, i'm sure uh, will help us in finding the solutions i would also like to uh, share uh, with the participants of this webinar is uh, about two efforts very grand efforts being taken up right now one is its we call it chennai intelligence transport system uh, it is a it, it is a project which has been conceived in collaboration with the japanese international uh, agency they are funding it it is a huge project of over uh, you know 900 crores we are going to uh, cover entire chennai metropolitan area in this and it will provide us it is basically technology ba uh, technology based uh, system wherein we are going to take up around 165 junction improvement there is other aspects about speed regulation about uh, you know uh, crash detection systems and there are many other things in this so for this uh, tender has uh, uh, this this week uh, a tender has been published and uh, we are hopeful of getting this system uh, working in uh, uh, maybe 6 to 8 months from now and there is another uh, uh grand effort actually uh, going on uh, we call it uh, road safety action plan for chennai it would be a government world bank uh, funded project and uh, uh, a very intensive assessment and and survey work is going on and uh, we would also like to take the inputs from the experts before we give our suggestions and inputs to the plan is international uh consultancy agency is working and greater chennai corporation is collaborating all those efforts and we are hopeful that uh, the gaps and the remaining uh, you know areas of, of focus in its we can cover that in chennai city road uh, i mean road safety action plan and uh, it is being the study is being done as of now so uh, i always say that uh, road safety uh, probably uh you know we know the challenges we know the the, the severity of the problem but uh, we need to uh, our actions need to take into account the other aspects and the inputs from the uh, you know other stakeholders including public and uh, it will not be i tell my people that enforcement okay you may be uh, you know increasing your efforts Uh, booking more people for violations but unless there is uh, you know awareness and they are there uh, from a uh, cooperation from their side to follow the road discipline uh, we may, may uh, you know always fall short of the expectations and our goals and in that direction i am very sure that uh, when we have this kind of uh, conversation 
it will certainly not only give us inputs and uh, you know expert knowledge but also uh, make us uh, you know more open to the ideas and uh, solutions and uh, in uh, with that i would like to conclude and i once again thank my colleague and uh, cag uh, CA and and uh, everyone present here to, for your time and we look forward to have this conversation more and more thank you so much thank you uh, thank you sir for your kind words and uh, yes we also look forward to supporting the uh, police's efforts in improving road safety um, thank you again for taking time and joining us i know as always uh, there are a number of things which uh, you know keep you busy during the day and it's very kind of you to make some time and join us um, now I'd like to uh, invite uh, DC Traffic Planning, uh, Mr. Surendranath, to uh, say a few words. Um, he has been instrumental in uh, helping us organize and get the speed survey on the uh, running on the ground. Uh, sir, over to you. Uh, good morning to all of you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sir. Uh, very good morning uh, to all of the participants on this guys. I first uh, thank uh, additional Commissioner Traffic for giving me this opportunity to be one of the participants in this uh, webinar. I thank the CAG first uh, for taking this initiative of road safety agenda and uh, in cooperation with uh, collaboration with uh, Chennai Traffic Police, he wanted to take out some remedial measures, some study matters and all for which uh, we supported. All the support was given by our commissioner and additional commissioner. So we provided you some uh, data and all. And all the field works were done by you, for which we are, I thank you first of all uh, for uh, doing an excellent work. And also thank uh, the Associate Professor Transport Engineering, IIT Madras, uh, Professor Bhir, Gita Krishnan Ramaguri also. So regarding this uh, speeding of vehicles, uh, not only the motorists are uh, the cause of the accident, so on the experience on the road and thing, we all know, we are all a, a road user in one way or other. But the main contributor is speeding alone is not a cause for the accidents or whatever it is. The basic discipline, basic discipline has to be followed. So there are the all important thing is the east, the supporting pillars of the E of the traffic. Mainly the three pillars. Now already there is five pillars, but the three pillars are the most important and vulnerable ones. Engineering and enforcement plays a major role. So all stakeholders. Simply enforcement alone can not bring down the accidents or cannot discipline. So it has to be studied. So what you are doing is a wonderful job. You have studied the cause of the accidents, the reasons, speeding and all these things. And uh, you can uh, see some places, some reckless driving, not only speeding, some, some speed limits are there in the Chennai city on all roads you can see. Boats are not displayed. So for motorcycle and light motor vehicles, it's 50 kilometers. For buses, it's 35 kilometers and all. But uh, speeding alone is not a cause for the accident. Reckless driving, even at a low speed, the motorists have the tendency to do a reckless driving, they endangering others and all things. So an education part, the awareness, the data, what you are doing is, now is the data should reach. One or two accidents are uh, published in the papers and all. They read it, forget it. It is kept for one day or two days. Can you hear me, madam? Yes, are sir. Okay? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So these data, the collection of the data plays a vital role and it should reach the customers. The customers, I mean the, the road users in any form. They may be in a petition or a motorist or whatever it is. So and uh, the punishment should be 
So it should be realized by the violator. It should be made realized by the. So the, the, to make the violators penalize, they have modified the MV Act and all, but yet to be implemented in uh, in some states. For example, in Tamil Nadu, the 2019 and 2020 modified uh, Motor Vehicle Act is yet to be implemented in our state. So this enforcing the third part, the enforcing part lays in the third part. So this engineering and this awareness, enforcement, education. This education plays a major role for to educate. You are uh, NGOs like you are playing a vital role. So this is, uh, we have to go a long way. You have begun and uh, all sectors of uh, road users should be taken. So number one ingredient, the pedestrians. And the most number of vehicle users are the two wheelers. So the capacity and the, the system of issuing and licenses and all these things by the other stakeholders like uh, transport department, uh, highways and all these things have to, we all have to put our heads together and work out the strategy. So this has to be modified. On the road, all of a sudden going for an enforcement and saying that uh, uh, by enforcement alone, we can bring down the accidents uh, that will not uh, work out to our expectations. There will be something one or two there and the involvement of uh, technologies. All should be aware of that things. And uh, a training. Training is uh, based on the data collected by NGOs or our other agencies. Our enforcement agencies, even transport department are doing an enforcement that has to be made to all the enforcing agencies. They should be trained and uh, motorists should be made aware that those things are going on and this is the data and all these things and all. So it's a wonderful thing that you are all doing, this collection of data and these agents. And uh, and uh, once all, thank you all for uh, having taken that. You are also taking this pedestrian safety. Pedestrian is a very important ingredient. And uh, apart from the motorist alone, uh, this uh, pedestrians also has to be taken care. And uh, that sector you are also taking. We thank you all uh, for having this arranged this and, uh, and giving me an opportunity to be on the present uh, one among the participants. Thank you, CAG. Um, thank you so much, sir. Yes, absolutely. Uh, all of us have a role to play here and uh, we, uh, we will definitely be looking forward to working with you and uh, collaborating with the department uh, and giving whatever support that we can. And uh, certainly uh, enforcement is, uh, is an important component and, uh, uh, you know, as you rightly pointed out, the uh, modified, uh, the amendments to the act also need to be taken into consideration and we need to look at, uh, you know, taking that forward and implementing it. And, but of course, other aspects also play a role. Road users need to do their bit. Uh, all of us need to do our part in this and work together. So we look forward to more of that and hopefully um, a decline in road crashes and fatalities in our state. Um, and uh, finally, uh, uh, but uh, we, have, we come to our third speaker, uh, Dr. Geeta Krishnan Ramadurai from IIT Chennai. Uh, he's an associate professor there uh, with a number of years of experience and wide knowledge on uh, transportation and transportation engineering. Um, and he will be bringing in that uh, academic perspective on this issue and talking to us today. Um, he has also been very uh, helpful in uh, when we had a lot of questions about the methodology and framing of our study. And he's been a uh, great sounding board for us and been very kind with his time and his knowledge, uh, sharing a lot of information with us. Uh, so, and today he will be talking about the effect of speeding on crashes and crash severity. Uh, Professor Geeta Krishnan, over to you. Yeah, so uh, very good morning to all. Uh, so first of all, thank you to CAG for uh, having me here. And uh, I must you know, also thank the Chennai City Traffic Police for taking time to join. I think their presence really gives a lot more weight to the session today, right? So without them, you know, I think uh, we would have fallen short, right? So thank you, grateful to them as well for joining in today. So I uh, have a short uh, presentation to make. Uh, can I share my screen? And... Uh, yes, I've uh, changed the settings. You should be able to. Yes, yeah. 
Uh, is my screen visible? Uh, it's not yet, but it's, uh, yes, yes, it's visible now. Yes, so <clears throat> I know, uh, when I asked well, ask for a title, I gave this as a title. So it won't be too uh, detailed or too academic. I've tried to keep it uh, fairly high level and uh, you know for everybody to understand. And of course, I'm happy to answer questions if there are questions. Right. So uh, you know, first, I usually share this slide whenever I talk about safety, uh, right? So this is something that I've been sharing for about 10 plus years, right? When people ask me, you know, there are so many accidents happening, but what can we do? Right. So here is an example of what uh, one of the European countries, right, France has done when it comes to safety. Right. This you must understand is over a period of almost four decades, right, starting from 1970 all the way up to 2010. Uh, right. So that's the uh, time span here. And if you see in 1970, France was having about uh, 15,000 people dying in road accidents. Right. So if you think about comparing France, you know, Tamil Nadu is perhaps a good comparison to France in terms of population, uh, all right? And at the same time, if you look at how much fatalities we used to have about three years back, we were having as many as uh, 17,000 people dying on our roads every year, right? So the numbers are very similar to what France has, right? So earlier when I used to tell people that, yes, you know, even we can reduce fatalities in India, right? People used to wonder, you know, what is he talking about? How is it possible? It's so difficult and so on, right? But uh, as our additional commissioner also uh, just pointed out, Tamil Nadu has done a wonderful job in reducing fatalities. What France has taken about uh, 20 years to achieve, we've actually achieved in about four years, right, as a state, in terms of reducing fatalities to almost 50% of what it is. So that way, it's an amazing achievement that we've done. But I was also very happy that he said we have so much more to do. Right? That's very, very true. So since we're going to talk about speed, uh, I just wanted to highlight a few things about speed here. So you can see that uh, you know, in 1970, early 1970, they started introducing speed limits. So before that, speed limits were not introduced and enforced on French roads. So this is something that they had done. And uh, then you can see the speed limit was uh, changed for you know, different types of roads, right? So you can't have the same speed limit for all roads. So you need to have different types of speeds for different roads. So all of these definitely have contributed to some reduction in fatality, right? So subsequently, <clears throat> you know, in the early 2000s, they actually came back uh, in, yeah, I'm sorry, in 1990s, they introduced speed limits in cities, right? What they found is people drive on highway and as the highway merges into the city, people continue to drive fast, right? So, but in cities, you need to have much lower speeds mainly because you have more density of traffic and therefore the likelihood of accidents happening is much higher, right? And finally, in early 2000, you can see they introduced speed cameras and that all further reduced, you know, uh, the impact of speed on uh, fatalities. So what we see here is, you know, majority of the interventions that you see in France, they're related to speed, right? So we really need to spend time, think about how we can set speed limits for different types of roads and enforce that or through engineering, make sure that is being followed, right? So that we can reduce fatalities. So speed has a very important role to play if you want to reduce accidents and fatalities. So why is speed so important? So here is uh, one graphic uh, that's available, uh, which talks about what is the probability of death when a pedestrian is hit by a car, right? So if the car is traveling at about 10 kilometers per hour, then the probability of death, if a car hits a person and traveling at 10 kilometers per hour, the probability of dying is actually zero, right? Nobody is going to die. On the other hand, if the same car hits the person at 80 kilometers per hour, that is one probability of 100% chance that the person will die, the pedestrian will die, right? So if you look at this particular curve, the curve kind of starts taking you know, a steep uh, slope somewhere around the 30 to 35 kilometers per hour speed limit, right? This is the reason why many of the cities across the world are recommending a speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour in cities, right? Because you'll have a lot of vehicle pedestrian interaction. So if you want to minimize fatalities of pedestrians, we need to keep the speed limits to 30, right? So that, that's the reason why, you know, this graph is the reason 
why they do that, right? So a 5% increase in average speed actually leads to 10% increase in crashes, right? And 20% uh, <clears throat> increase in fatal crashes, right? So many of our roads, you know, we do have higher speed limits. I think, you know, it is time for us to revisit those, especially on roads where we have significant pedestrians and they're crossing the roads. We really need to consider a 30 kilometer per hour speed limit. So this is just another uh, source of the same, you know, uh, impact of speed on, you know, fatalities. So you can see that, you know, when it's a pedestrian, the curve is much steeper, right? And around 30 is what is ideal. Anything over that, the probability of a pedestrian dying increases exponentially, very fast, right? Even when you talk about other vehicles, you know, especially uh, in cities, right? When you have side impact collision, the probability of you know fatality is higher than a head-on collision, right? Because when you have a head-on collision, that is the crumpled zone of the vehicle in front of the vehicle, which can absorb some of that impact and therefore reduce the intensity of crash. But when you have a side impact collision, right? So that time you don't have the comfort of that uh, crumpled zone of vehicles, and therefore you know the impact will be much stronger, and fatalities are more likely to happen, right? So even there we find that. Once you go beyond about 45 kilometers per hour, it increases substantially. So in cities where you have a lot of crossroads, right, it's always good to have speed limits below 45. When you have a lot of pedestrians interacting, it's good to have speeds below 30. Right? So this is, uh, you know, with respect to impact of speed on, you know, crash severity in terms of fatal accidents. And, right? So what can we do? Um, <coughs> speed engineering is one thing, but you know, it's actually engineering is also a way of enforcing speed limits. So, you know, we tend to call it more of speed enforcement, right? I believe technology is the key, right? So here you find, uh, you know, there's a picture from Australia. They even use aerial speed enforcement, right? They have, you know, uh, helicopters or, you know, uh, small planes or aircraft, which are monitoring vehicles, which are likely to, you know, speed and then enforcing things, right? Of course, we don't need to go to such extremes, Right? Even if you have speed cameras installed in multiple locations, right? that can really help reduce you know, speeding substantially. Right? So you find this is an example of a speed camera. So one of the, one of the studies that people had also done was, uh, see the speed cameras are expensive. Right? So you don't need to perhaps have a speed camera in every location. What one could do is you, know, you could have more such housings for speed cameras. And then you can keep moving one speed camera across these different housing so that you share the same camera in different, different locations, right? And typically when people see this housing, immediately they start slowing down. So even if you don't have a camera in it, right? You're able to fool the public into thinking, well, there may be a camera and therefore they have to travel, you know, slower, right? So these are ways, you know, in which we can better use the scarce resources we have in terms of, you know, uh, money, right? So we can have multiple such installations of the housing but you could have one speed camera which is being rotated across these locations so that you know we can have you know a much wider impact right with limited funding that we may have uh, there are other ideas like speed humps right so especially in residential roads it's good to have them right and uh, those speed humps uh, reduce speed but they can also sometimes be dangerous if it's not properly designed right uh, research has shown that even if you don't put speed humps if you have rumble strips or even if you have these kind of road marking, what is called a dragon's teeth, right? Even these tend to reduce, you know, speeds. With the dragon's teeth, what happens is psychologically the driver thinks the road width is reduced, and therefore he tends to reduce the speed. Right? So these are ways in which, without having a speed hump, which can, you know, create jerks and so on, right? We can have, uh, you know, speed humps, uh, uh, you know, speed reduction uh, ideas. Speed humps are also a problem when you have emergency vehicles and VIP vehicles, right? So emergency vehicles need to continue driving fast. If you have speed humps, they also have to reduce. But these kind of road markings can be useful in reducing speeds without having you know, to affect emergency vehicles. Right? Um, in residential areas, people may not follow these things strictly. In such cases, these kind of ideas of chickens, right, where you narrow down the uh, road width by half, right, by having these kind of small islands can be used to reduce speed. right? Uh, in India, one other challenge that we have is some of these are more effective when you have uh, cars, when you have two wheelers, 
you know what people tend to do is people tend to take this as a challenge <laughs> right they drive faster and try to navigate it you know as a challenge as a thrill right so those are issues that we need to keep in mind you know when we are de- de- designing solutions for india how is it that even two wheelers we are able to reduce some of these right so one way to do that would be to have in addition to the chicken have a small speed hump in the middle of the road not spanning the entire width but just a little bit of it so that you narrow down the road width available for the two wheelers to drive fast right so that way you can you know further impose it. so these are things that we need to design keeping in mind in dane conditions i just picked up a couple of studies which talk about uh, speed and uh, road crash right these are uh, this is from a study in a review study in 2006 from accident analysis and prevention which is one of the top journals on accident studies so here i just want to highlight you know this first graph here is showing uh, <clears throat> the relative crash liability right and what is the vehicle speed in relation to speed limit right so even when vehicles are traveling at speeds lower than the speed limit even then there is a positive value for relative crash liability right but once vehicles start traveling above the speed limit you can see the graph increases and even the rural roads have much higher speeds of 100 km per hour and urban roads have lower speeds of about 60 km per hour this increase in the crash liability is much more steeper in urban roads as compared to rural roads right so this is something for us to keep in mind when we talk about chennai any 5 km 10 km increase in speeds compared to the posted speed limit can lead to a significant increase in crash liability right so that's something for us to keep in mind so this is again you know uh, this is talking about individual uh, vehicle speed right and crash liability so as speed increases you can see you know the liability increases exponentially one other graph from the same study which i thought i will share is uh, this is talking about congested roads right inner city linked roads suburban roads and so on right so we may think that congested roads anyway speeds will be low and therefore crash frequency will be lesser right but what happens is congested roads yes speeds may be low but then the, the, but then what happens is there's something called as a intermittent speeding when you have congestion vehicles slow down but once the congestion eases up vehicles tend to speed much more because they are already frustrated with the congestion before and therefore they want to make up for that lost time and they end up speeding more right and so even on congested roads we find that you know the relative crash frequency increases significantly as speed increases right followed by inner city link roads suburban link roads and outer suburban fast roads right so you can see the crash frequency is much higher at higher speeds in cities as opposed to suburban and rural areas so that's something we need to keep in mind another study talks about uh, you know impact of average speed speed variation on accident rates right and one important thing i want to highlight here is you know they actually say the average speeds themselves do not lead to more accidents when you control for several other factors right on the other hand the speed variation right when you have vehicles traveling at different speeds this variation of speeds tend to have a much bigger impact right than the average speed itself right so you know in indian roads particularly you have different types of vehicles and these vehicles travel at different speeds right so we need to pay attention to this speed variation or speed differential right when we are talking about interventions uh, when you're talking about how to reduce speed and improve accidents it's perhaps not reducing speed it's more to do with reducing speed variations so how can we control for speed variations is something that we need to do okay. of course many of these states uh, studies are based on international data india we don't yet have comprehensive studies looking at speed and accidents right so that's a need that is there we need to do more studies related to that uh then i'll come back uh, to this uh, couple of slides on a study that we had done about 4 5 years back in 2016 uh on the request of the then director general of police mr rajendran we took up black spot studies in tamil nadu right and one of the things that we did was we visited uh black spots in 10 districts in the state and uh, one of the studies we did as part of that was the speed study so wherever we found there is a black spot we went and studied what are the speeds of vehicles there right and this is what we found of course most of these locations were uh, you know uh, highways right uh, but what i want to highlight here is this graph you see on the left here is uh, the speed density right so very and for different vehicle types 
So when you talk about high, uh, heavy motor vehicles, they have a certain speeds. When you have light motor vehicles, they have certain speeds. And then when you have two wheelers, they have a certain speeds, right? So you find that, you know, uh, heavy motor vehicles, right? Most of the vehicles seem to be around 40 to 50 kilometers per hour speed limit, right? So they sell, tend to be more consistent in terms of the speed. Then we talk about light motor vehicles, you find there is much more spread. The mean is lesser, right? Maybe around 35, 40, but then there is a lot of spread. Many vehicles travel at even 50, 60, 70 kilometers per hour, and many vehicles even travel at 20 kilometers per hour, right? And when you look at two wheelers, very interesting that you have this kind of a bimodal distribution, uh, right? You have a lot of vehicles at about 30 to 40 kilometers per hour, and then you have these other vehicles which are 50 kilometers per hour, right? And one of the reasons that we thought uh, this could be is because you know the uh, two wheelers, you know, you have the scooters, and then you have these high power motor vehicles, right? So people with the high power motor vehicles tend to travel at much higher speed, and therefore perhaps you have this twin peak, right? Twin distribution, uh, bimodal distribution. Right? So the important thing here is the speeds of different vehicles are not the same. There's a lot of variation across these different vehicle types, right? And this speed differential actually leads to more accidents than the actual speed itself, right? So this is something that we had pointed out, right? Uh, often, you know, we think how fast is fast, right? So this is a video. I don't know if it will play. Let me try playing it. So this is in a highway. So you can see the heavy motor vehicles have a certain speed. All right. There's a guy going in the wrong direction, though there is a police vehicle there. So, all right. So the speeds of most of the heavy vehicles were about 60, 70 kilometers per hour. But this car, on the other hand, was traveling at much higher speed. Right. So you can see those vehicles on the leftmost lane. They're traveling at 40, 50. And then the rightmost lane, you have cars traveling at almost you know, 100 kilometers per hour. Right? So this is what I'm talking about when you talk about speed differential. Right? So you have in one lane vehicles traveling at much slower speeds. And then you have another lane where vehicles are traveling at high, very high speeds. If one of those vehicles were to move to the lane which has lower speeds, that is going to be a likelihood of a conflict and an accident. Right? So this is something that we have to keep in mind, right? And just standing there, you could feel, right? There's a video I've recorded. You could see the high speeds at which vehicles are traveling, especially on highways. Okay, so just to quickly summarize, uh, city roads are, of course, different from highways. We need to uh, deal with them very differently, right? And in India, we have problem of more vulnerable road users, your pedestrians, bicyclists, as well as your two-wheelers, right? So the two-wheeler riders are vulnerable road users. But at the same time, you know, with more high power two wheelers, they're also found to speed, right? So this is a problem that's unique, right? They are vulnerable and they also speed. So how do we tackle, right? So many of the interventions that we come up with are difficult for, to implement for two wheelers, right? And sometimes it can be dangerous as well. So for example, a speed breaker, which is not properly designed can be very dangerous for a two wheeler. Similarly, we have barricades which are installed in many places to reduce speeds that can be dangerous for a two wheeler rider. Right? So this is something that uh, we need to keep in mind. Right? Uh, some interventions which are specific to two-wheelers need to be you know, uh, worked out. And like I said, speed differential and speed variations matter more than actual speeds. And in a city, because you have stop and go traffic, we have what is called as intermittent speeding. So whenever you have a stretch of road that is reasonably free, people tend to speed in that to make up for the lost time. They really don't make up because they have to anyway go and stop in the next junction. But this is just a psychological thing that people come up with. And finally, you know, I want to highlight that our objective is not to control or reduce speed, but it is to reduce accidents, right? So we should not come up with blanket reduction of speed. You know, I know there was a high court ruling which said reduce all highway speeds to a certain value. I don't think that's a very, uh, you know, scientifically right way to approach the problem. The scientific way would be to understand where speeds matter. And in those places alone, those locations alone, we control or reduce the speed so that the eventual objective of reducing accidents is achieved, right? So that's what we need to focus on. And for this, we will, of course, need specific studies, right? And come up with specific interventions. Thank you. And if there are questions, I'm happy to answer the questions. Um, thank you for that, uh, Dr. Geeta Krishnan. Uh, 
some excellent food for thought for all of us. And I think, um, you know, making us, uh, you know, also think of the complexities of uh, what this would involve. So that was very interesting and useful. Um, and definitely, yes, uh, it's not just about putting in place uh, speed limits. Obviously, the end goal is to reduce fatalities and crashes and ensure that that contributes to that larger situation of better road safety for everyone. Um, so we now have a little time for uh, discussion questions. Uh, so participants who might want to um, add uh, any of their inputs or ask a question of any of the speakers are uh, welcome to raise their hand and uh, we will uh, invite each of them then to uh, say a few words, just requesting everyone to keep it uh, crisp and to the point. Um, or you can, uh, I think you should be able to unmute yourselves and actually speak. So if anybody has anything that they'd like to add, uh, please feel free. This is Ravi Damodaran. I have a question. Yes, sir, Mr. Damodaran, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Damodaran, that was a very interesting uh, find which uh, more or less confirms the ground reality. But I have one question. About 10 years ago, Coimbatore had a speed limit of 50 kilometers per liter. I mean, uh, 50 kilometers per hour, and Chennai had a 40 kilometers per hour. So I suggested they should make, and uh, Coimbatore had less accidents in Chennai. So how do you account for it? My second question is when you talked about technology, about 15 years ago, I spoke to the managing director of Bosch. He says all the fuel pumps in cars and trucks, by adding a chip, it will record continuously the speed of the vehicle. And any cop, when he stops any vehicle, even if one month ago he has sped, he can be caught. So that is pretty effective in Germany, I believe. So these are two, one question and one suggestion I have. Yeah, so... Uh... I think, you know, uh, like you said, uh, yeah, speeds were low, different in Coimbatore and Chennai, but Coimbatore had lower accidents, Chennai had more accidents, right? So there are multiple factors which affect accidents, right? So speed is only one of the factors. And uh, like I showed in a couple of the studies, speeds don't affect as much as the speed differential, right? So in Chennai, the reason for more accidents is mainly because we have a lot more vehicular population Right? We have a lot more pedestrian population, and therefore the probability of conflict is much higher. Right? And that is one reason. The other reason is Chennai has actually many arterial roads, right, which are six lane, and they have been designed for much higher speed limits. Right? That is why I say that one speed limit for the entire city is not a good idea. So if you have, for example, the Chennai bypass or uh, the IT corridor, which are which is like called IT expressway, though it's not an expressway. So these have been designed for operating at higher speed limits, right? So enforcing a lower speed limit in such you know, well-designed roads doesn't serve the purpose, right? We need to have vehicles traveling at a certain speed, which is permissible according to design. But at the same time, we should protect the vulnerable road users, right? So that's why one speed across the city is not going to help, right? So though speed limit in Chennai was 40, we know in IT Expressway, we know in the Chennai Bypass or in Ponamali High Road, vehicles travel at much higher speeds and therefore there are more accidents happening. We need to have enforcement, just posting speed limit is not sufficient. So that's with respect to the first one. With respect to the second question of having a speed governor which is constantly tracking, right? It's a possibility, but it has to come through legislation. But if you bring such a legislation, you know, it requires a lot of political will, right? So whether or not, you know, the parties, politicians will be able to make such a decision, because they may be voted out of power next time, right? So that requires political will. Uh, technology is there, definitely to control, track, and reduce speeds in these cases. I hope you are aware that Chennai Mount Road and uh, two other arterial roads, we had lane, different lanes for different vehicles. Yes, we and used Chennai to have that 20 years back. 
our buses, lorries, and autos, the speed limit is 35 and it's 40 for everybody else. Yeah, I have not so been a definitely that, of that. Uh, lane discipline has to come back. I don't know why yeah. they abandoned it. Yes, yes. You know, uh, so segregation, lane segregation is very much required, especially for two wheeler safety. I think we need to bring that back. I agree with you there. Yeah, I've been you. talking about that with authorities. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Damodaran, for the questions. And uh, thank you, Dr. Geeta Krishnan, for those clarifications. So uh, if anybody else has any uh, comment or questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask or add to the conversation. So if, if we don't have any um, questions or any other inputs, uh, uh, you know, also always just uh, mail us if it occurs to you later, and then we will uh, reach out to our speakers and uh, respond to those questions or comments as they may be. Um, uh, if, if there's uh, nobody else wants to add into the conversation, then uh, I guess we could wind up a tad early, uh, which is fairly unusual on Zoom webinars these days. Uh, but uh, yes, so um, so uh, for, uh, so I'd like to uh, thank everyone for joining us today, um, for your time and your interest in the topic, all the participants who've come. We hope it was interesting and useful. Our uh, study report will be ready shortly, and we will be sharing it um, with the police uh, department as well. And of course, it will also be on our website and available publicly for anyone who's interested. Um, and we will uh, put that up in a few days, we hope. Um, and uh, we also, again, wanted to reiterate and thank uh, the additional commissioner uh, traffic. Um, when we approached him uh, a couple of months ago, he was uh, very uh, warm and ready to discuss uh, issues with us, who was ready to uh, collaborate and uh, take things forward. And so we are really happy uh, for that um, very open and collaborative spirit that he uh, you know, shared with us. And we look forward to supporting uh, the police department in their enforcement and implementation work, which is a tough job as we can, we all know. Um, and we're also very thankful for the DC traffic planning who again has been very uh, friendly and helpful and shared data and information with us and has uh, you know, uh, been very interested in uh, taking studies forward and discussing issues. Um, and also for both of them for taking their time off today uh, and uh, making time to join us um, with their schedules. It's always really hard for them to tell when they would get a little bit of time for such a program. So thank you again uh, for Mr. Pradeep Kumar and uh, Mr. Surendranath for your time and your uh, support. And of course, uh, Dr. Geeta Krishnan, again, for all the support and willing to uh, have, you know, every time I call him and say, I need to talk to you for two minutes and then it becomes one hour and he patiently listens and gives all his information and shares data with us and inputs. And also, of course, um, uh, for uh, sharing uh, the equipment, the speed gun radar that uh, they would shared with us and his team who helped us troubleshoot the equipment when we needed it. Uh, thank you to you and your team as well. And also for joining us today and uh, speaking uh, so clearly on speeding issues. Uh, thank you so much. And finally, again, thank you to all the participants and to my colleagues uh, at CAG for uh, giving us all their support uh, to make this webinar possible. And to our uh, friends at, uh, at the Road Safety Network who've joined us today, who've taken time off. Actually, we all had a number of events going on today. So I'm very glad that some of them were able to join us again today. Uh, a lot, it's like a 
you know, how they have good days for weddings. Uh, today seems to be the good day for Zoom webinars and meetings, a lot of meetings going on. So thank you again, everyone. And uh, we will be sharing that report, as I said, and we look forward to more interaction collaboration with everybody.